Welcome back everybody to Desktop Inventions. Now today we're going to be going over the third and potentially final installment on this V8 printing head upgrade. So today we're going to be going over some of my previous design mistakes, we'll go through some design updates, and then we'll have some updated fan testing as well. So with all that to come, let's dive right in. So in the past few videos on this project, I've went through many design iterations to get this 3D printing head to work pretty well. And as to where it stands today, it is quieter than a stock Ender 3, and it is more capable with this direct drive extruder and all metal hot end. It's able to print TPU soft materials and even high temperature materials such as ABS. But to be totally honest, the bottleneck of this printing head design is the part cooling solution. And if you listen closely, you can hear this new problem that I've been dealing with. So the fan is really slow to start up and it keeps kicking on and off and on and off repeatedly until it eventually stabilizes after about a minute. I'm not sure exactly what caused this problem, but I do know when I hook the fans up to a power source directly, they work without a problem. So I think it has something to do with the two 12 volt fans being hooked in series to the 24 volt power source from the Ender 3. So I thought about trying to fix this by hooking the two fans in parallel and connecting it to the 3D printer and just controlling them at 50% fan speed not to overload them. But then I realized even at 50% speed, it would still be 24 volts just at a 50% duty cycle from the PWM controller. Because I didn't want to damage the fans, I decided to hook up a DC converter in between to switch the voltage from 24 to 12 volts, and then I would hook the fans in parallel connected to this. At least, that's what I was planning to do, and then I realized this was getting a little bit too complicated. Oftentimes, the best solution is the most simple solution. So I decide instead of trying to rewire the whole system to be 12 volts, I could just look for some other 24 volt fan alternatives. And that's where the maglev fans come into play. So I've decided to take these two 24 volt Sunon maglev fans and wire them in parallel to the printer. And this way we can keep the native 24 volt wiring system on the printer and we can keep the ability to adjust the fan speed from the printer menu. Now with a little bit of soldering work out of the way, let's see if these bad boys turn on. Oh yeah! And now let's take a look at the water cup test. So the 12 volt Noctua appears to be outperforming the 12 volt Maglev. And at 18 volts the Maglev appears to be similar, maybe even a little bit better in performance. And then when we crank it up to 24 volts there's no competition. The Maglev just blows it out of the water. Literally. Now let's compare the Maglev fan performance in the overhang test. So this is a standard overhang from 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80 degrees. This is done with the original 12 volt Noctua fan. So now we can see the performance 40 and 50 degrees, no problem, 60 is a little shaky and 70, 80 gets ugly. So let's compare that against the 12 volt Maglev fan. So I'm not sure if you can see that here, but these are almost identical in tests here. Again, 60 looks okay and 70, 80 gets to be pretty bad. And then next I turn the Maglev fan up to 18 volts. Let's see how that compares with the Noctua. It's a little bit smoother, but not too much of a noticeable difference. You can see at the top here, the part is not curling as much. Here on this uh, Noctua one, the corners are curling quite a bit. And now let's take a look at the results for 24 volts on the Maglev fan. We can see here, things are definitely getting smoother. It's looking a lot better than the original but I think there's still a lot of room for improvement, so I think we're gonna take this up to the next level with the next test. All right, now we're back here with this new printing head. It's the yellow one on the right, and the only change I made on this one is I made the fan outlet duct quite a bit bigger, so this is about as big as I can go, I think. Now here's a look at that fan outlet duct from a different angle. You can see it's straight through and there's not very much restriction in there, so hopefully it brings it to the next level. So now we can spend a little bit of time to get the fans mounted on the new printing head. It's super fast and easy with this design. And next we'll be taking the printing head and doing the water cup test and see if we have some improvements. Wow, those fans are too loud. But we can see the new printing head has some better airflow. All right, let's look at the difference between the old and the new printing head here. So we have the same overhang test, and on both of them we can see it's pretty good, 40, 50 degrees, and then 60 again is our questionable area. 
Now looking up close here, we can see the new printing head is just a little bit smoother in this middle 60 degree area here, but both printing heads are not capable of doing 70 and 80 degree overhangs. So I'm still not quite satisfied with the printing results here. I think there's still ways I can improve this printing head. Maybe I can polish the inside of the ducts. Maybe I can change the shape of the duct or maybe add some liquid cooling or put this whole thing in a vacuum chamber. Hey, wait, what? What's that? A blower fan? Maybe that'll work. All right, so call me crazy if you will, but I'm finally starting to get it. This whole time I've been trying to take a large fan with a large opening and screw a piece of plastic onto it to make it shoot air out of a small opening onto our small nozzle. So this whole time there's existed a blower fan which is designed to shoot air out of a small opening. And it does a really good job at it too. So thank you everybody in the comment section trying to tell me this. I think I'm finally done trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Wow, these fans are way too loud. Oh wait, the blower fan's really quiet actually. Okay, so the blower fan has great flow, it's really quiet. Let's see how it does in the printing test. So let's just do a quick and dirty setup here and do a quick print test, see how it does. Now let's take a look at the print from the new radio blower fan at 24 volts. You can see here it's looking really nice. 40, 50, 60, even 70 degrees is almost flawless. Still can't get the 80 degree mark, but that's okay. So what does this mean for the V8 printing head design? Well, I'm not really sure right now, but I'm probably gonna take a break for a little bit. I will up upload the latest and greatest design I have here on printables and Thingiverse, so you guys can get that there if you want. But be aware it's not the optimal design for the best part cooling solution. So I'll probably end up spending some more of my time to design a new printing head based on these blower fans and see if we can get a really great printing head solution out of these. And unfortunately, I was unable to find a design with the two blower fans, a Dragonfly hot end and an Orbiter V2 on Thingiverse and printables. You know, those places can sometimes be a black hole. So uh, if anyone else knows of a design, can leave it in the comment section below. Otherwise, I'll probably end up spending some time and design my own printing head for these blower fans. And that'll probably be the next project I'm working on. So thank you everybody for watching this video and tuning along for this journey. We'll see you next time on Desktop Inventions. And for anybody still sticking around, we have a little bit of bonus content. So I've seen some people in the comments asking for an updated version of the stop switch. The original model I uploaded of the stop switch extender is not long enough to work on these bigger printing heads, and I apologize for that. And since then I was pretty lazy and I kept adding hot glue onto this stop switch extender, and that's not a good solution. So now I've actually designed and printed out a new longer stop switch extender. And this one, just like the old one, will just slip onto the stop switch here. And now the switch is plenty long enough so you won't have issues with your printing head running into the cover. And a couple notes on printing this, there is a very thin slot in here that needs to fit tightly onto your stop switch. If you're having any troubles with this part staying on your switch, you'll just want to increase your line width to make that gap a little bit smaller. Actually, when I printed mine out, it was slightly fused together and I had to open this up with a knife. And when you're done, this piece should be able to firmly press onto your stop switch. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on Desktop Inventions.